It's a beautiful spring day here in Orlando, Florida, and I am bringing you to Lou Gardens for my very first visit. There's a lot to see, hear, and do here today, so let's get to it. Are we both listening to the bird song, Adam? Yeah. Have you ever been here before? Adam, I've never been here. Never? It's the first time. Let's get in there. Let's get in there. Look at this beautiful house. I'm doing a little footprints down here. Please wait here. Besides the beautiful historic gardens, there's also a dinosaur invasion going on right now. Let's go get that dino. We did pick up some maps to help get around. The back of the map has a guide to all the different dinosaurs that you can find here at the dinosaur invasion event. They range in size from really small to really, really large. I have been wanting to come out to this event since it started in January, and I'm so happy and like ready to go on this dinosaur hunt today. Even without the dinosaur invasion though, there are over 50 acres of beautiful lush gardens here, a historic home, and a lot of Orlando history that we'll be talking about as we explore and look for dinosaurs. So it's like a double whammy of fun today. Admission was only $10, very, very reasonable for a beautiful day in the gardens. Look at this gate up ahead. Blankets are not permitted. No blankets. I better take the blankets I brought back to the car. I brought I like 20. If, if a triceratops wants to have a little picnic, they're out of, out of gas, he's yeah. Out of luck, yeah. Like most botanical gardens, it seems to be divided up into different areas. And we're going into the tropical stream garden, it looks like. I can already feel the humidity. Oh, oh, right down here. Look. Dinosaurs! Let's see our first ones. That's the noise I picture they make. That's pretty neat. That is really beautiful. And do you know what those are? Um, they have wings. They have feathered wings. I would say raptor because that's like, you know, one of the three dinosaurs I know. Yeah, let's look at our sheet. Now, but there's also a guide here. So these are the Bambi raptors. Bambi raptors? Bambi. That's so Bamba cool. raptor? How would you pronounce that? Bambi raptor. Yeah, right? And it's right next to this bamboo stand. So Bambi I'm going to call bamboo. it bamboo raptor. Maybe that's what it, you know what? That's what it might be. Yeah. I'm thinking Bambi like the Disney film. That's yeah. I think of Bambi. Oh, there's a sign that tells us. I was actually more fun to like figure oh it out ourselves, I think. Oh, look, named after the Disney character. Oh. Bambi. Oh Their my diet. gosh. It's not a specific diet. It's just, just carnivore. A, just carnivore. That's pretty much me in a nutshell. So these are the most bird-like of all dinosaurs and they are raptors. So I was right in saying raptor. All right, let's stay on the hunt. So like Spanish moss and beautiful trees. Good fun. We just walked over two bridges with waterfalls and lilies and ferns. It feels very prehistoric back here, very lush. What, that's not real? How could that look real? That it is looks legit like it's about to blink. Yeah, it's really, really well done. Very realistic. Like the skin and everything, the teeth. Look at the eyes. You want to take a chance and see if it's real? Ancient Greek meaning lizard. Oh, look, it looks like there's a butterfly garden here. Most botanical gardens I've been to have a butterfly garden, so hopefully we'll get to look at that. And a rose garden. We found an Allosaurus and babies. He could be his bodyguard. Or his long lost pal. <laughs> He's like, great joke, guys. Just stay away from my babies. They look really, really good. Like they're very beautifully yeah. made. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> this is from the late Jurassic period, another carnivore. I'm guessing they're probably, well, no. Some are vegetarians. Yeah, some are. Yeah. This is the Lou House Museum. They do tours every half hour of this historic home. Here are some cottages. This says it's the curator's office. There are herb gardens all around. Okay. So, where is that? Oh, cool, we found it. Okay, number four. So we're going in order and we're doing good. We got the Apatosaurus bones over there. These are late Jurassic. Oh, it's an herbivore. Okay. Our yeah. first herbivore. I think that's so interesting that they would eat rocks. I've heard of people kicking rocks. <laughs> no. Kick rocks. Maybe when this dinosaur was eating their plants and didn't want to be bothered, it's like, kick rocks, I'm eating rocks. I bet they did say that. The sign says they didn't chew. So they used the rocks as their teeth but in their stomach. So eating rocks is part of their digestion process. That's so interesting. And I do also find it interesting that instead of creating the actual dinosaur, they've got some bones here for us just to show us like a scale, a size scale of how large this creature must have been. If that's how big the bones are. We got a pretty key lime tree here. And look at how beautiful and blue the day is. It's a perfect day for dinosaur hunting. Next up is the Sitipati 
and Ness. They're called the Funeral Pyre Lord. That's definitely what I would have thought City Pati meant. So these are really small, three foot tall and eight foot long. They've also got feathers. They got the nests in there with the eggs. They've got those like bird-like eyes. This is the Hypsibema, Hypsibema, Hypsibema. Does his face not look like a little bit Jar Jar Binksy? Kinda, yeah. Like look at his like mouth. Like a little bit, right? I think he's very happy that you stated that. I'm so sorry. He is not hype about me saying that. He's more sorry. of a Kylo fan. He does look a little brooding. Now we're going into the white garden. The pathways are lined with white flowers. There are so many families and kids loving the dinosaur exhibit. Check out this pretty gazebo. I think we're kind of like at a crossroads here. Yeah, here we are. Okay. We're, we're off the we? path. We're off the uh -oh, path. Uh-oh, we're off the dinosaur path. We gotta go up here and then around. Okay. And then loop. actually let's go back and then cut back over there. Okay, way. all right, let's do if it. Now we're gonna miss number seven. We can't miss any this now. Is my lucky number. Is it? Seven? Okay, I like that. Better than six. My lucky number is two. Whoa! Ah! Oh, I thought we were gonna get got there. Next up is a Parasaurolophus. And this is another herbivore. The work they did on creating these, the colors, the textures. It's really immaculate. They look so lifelike and so real. And so they would have to run from predators on two legs, 25 miles per hour. And it's got that head crest thing, it's hollow. And they use it to identify males from females and help to regulate their body temperature. So it's about 16 feet tall, 32 feet long and weighed two to three tons. It's really beautiful with the head crest thing. The creator of this exhibit is Guy Darrow, and he's a well-respected fossil collector and expert. He did an immaculate job. The team he worked with, just the first seven, are so incredibly impressive and beautifully constructed. This is Mary Jane's Rose Garden. I love this plaque. I saw it from afar and I was just drawn to come and see what it was. So it's in memory of Mary Jane Liu, wife of Harry P. Liu, and resident of these gardens for 25 years. Oh, this one's a scary one. Placerius. Look at that mouth. Now this would probably be a meat eater. Should maybe go walk back over there and look. Here, I'll tell you. See what it says. It says herbivore. Herbivore. Really? Yeah, that That's mouth amazing. is for eating plants. It's got a powerful neck, strong legs, and barrel-shaped body. It's not a dinosaur, but a mammal-like reptilian due to its beak-like mouth and tusks. I was thinking that too. I was like, Fine. that is Fine. something. Those are tusks. Tusks and claws he's got. Is that claws? Well, I would say those are claws. He's standing on a brick. Yeah, he's got some bricks. He's a brick. Here's a little side note. If you've ever seen the film Problem Child 2 with John Ritter, uh -huh. where Junior fell asleep right up here. Oh. And the love rock, they called it, oh. is right here in the center of this. If you've ever seen the movie Problem Child 2, John Ritter, walked right down this path i believe it is don't quote me on this it's been a while we're quoting you but down here parked the vehicle walked up here saw junior slumbering <laughs> and the love rock with a prop was placed right here in the middle of this section you know adam one of your passions is doing filming locations yes so that little tidbit was really interesting and you have a full video on it i do a long so time if anyone ago. wants to see that side note that yeah. was the first well, video that i ever said join me shall you really beginning of that video i did not yes. know that oh my gosh side note i like those side notes problem child two filming locations okay but back there there's like a peppermint pinwheel little thing in the flowers over there so we can pretend that's the love rock number nine we're going in order here we've got the sword is they're called the devil or the hairy devil these are carnivores and they fly they could walk or climb trees or fly it's a little reptile and i love this presentation they really almost blend in with the tree so you can imagine these would be sneaky little devils right and then over there there's another one on that tree they look kind of like bats too Especially that one. That one really looks like a bat. It says scientists believe that sorties were covered in hair. Um. Now is it gonna go this way and then shift back? I don't know. Or I'm going for it. I did see some guests go this way though. Okay. Ah! I made it. Whew. 
That was a close call. It's a dinosaur. The famous and beloved Velociraptor. Look at that little face, so curious. Speedy thief, swift robber carnivores. It could run about 40 miles per hour in short bursts. This is so teeny and tiny, but he can pack a punch. It's got a little bit of mischievousness. I'm noticing that most of the dinosaurs are like brown colored, so they blend in with the surroundings. It's a fun game to look for them. Of course, there are signs that help you and the map helps too, but it's neat to just look around and try to spot them. Oh, wow. What the Despletosaur? Despletosaur. Look at its tiny, tiny little eyeballs. Very T-Rex looking with the tiny little arms. The meaning of the name, frightful lizard. Accurate, apt, hiding the trees from this one. One of the most feared predators, standing up to 12 feet tall, 30 feet long, and weighing over four tons. Adam was over here doing his best startled look, see? He says he's gonna show me up on the selfies, but let's see if I can be more startled. I did a gasp to like make it more realistic. If, you, if I didn't have a mask on, you could see my extremely startled face, but we've got to emote through our eyes. Let's see it in your eyes. Good one. Good, thanks. So this says it was a larger than a T-Rex and the largest predator. So fearful. Yeah, you think of the, the, the T-Rex. Yeah, everybody knows T-Rex. Nobody yeah. knows. I bet the reason Despletosaur doesn't get as much love as a T-Rex is just because its name is hard to say. He could like, be the he could be the D-Saur. The D-Saur, the D-Rex. The D-Rex. Yeah, he's like, don't tell everyone about me, see? That way I can sneak up. Looks like he's dancing. Like he's on the one foot doing the little... Uh... Doing the desaur. That is one you don't want to face. Look at the scales on his head. It's beautiful. Terrifying. <laughs> I'm seeing that resembles close to that is up top. Yeah, where's you the sausages? You can see one of the sausages. Where? Oh, I see it. Right up there just kind of dangling. It looks more like a potato. Yeah, I thought it was a potato too. Oh, you know what? There's a whole bunch more up top. One potato, two potato. Oh, I see the potatoes now. Yeah. Oh yeah, a bunch of them. Well, they're sausages. Well, I'm gonna call them potatoes. Oh, there's another one over there. Okay, what's next? You see it? Do you see it? The Questalo, the Questalcoatlas. How would you pronounce that? I don't know, but it's up in the tree. Looks like a stork. It's named after a feathered serpent god of the Aztecs. They're flying reptiles with tweezer-like beaks and no teeth. Two of them up in a nest in the tree. Even from this far away, you can see all the detail in there, in the beaks. It's beautiful. Angel trumpet. Oh, right over here. I'm just mesmerized by the angel trumpets. What are they? Angel trumpets. Yeah, aren't they? Okay, next dinosaur though. Oh, oh, tiny little buggers, huh? Next to the little berries there. Oh, you can have some berries. Eat those. No. You might have an end of the wild moment. Yeah, or a blue lagoon moment. So what are these? The Heterodontosaurus. Different tooth lizard. These are omnivores, so they eat everything. They're about 20 inches tall. One of the first kinds of dinosaurs have developed cheeks to keep the food in their mouth. They're little cheeks. Hanging out. Yeah, they do have very googly eyes. My favorite part is the meanings of their names. So this one is Elegant Jaw. Look at how elegant his little jaw is. So cute, really. But he's a carnivore, so he'd eat insects and lizards and small animals. And this is one of the smallest dinosaurs that roam the earth. But scientists believe he could run 40 miles per hour. Wow. Oh, cypress knees. Beautiful cypress trees and lily pads. This is like my favorite kind of like Florida nice natural, here. yeah, area. There used to be a Cypress Knee Museum down towards South Florida. It's sitting there abandoned in the woods. Oh my gosh, I never heard of that. Yeah. I would have totally gone to that. It's a very large and peaceful park. There's birds chirping. It's very, very quiet, very serene. As we're walking between, you're able to like chat and stroll and enjoy the nature. It's a really, really lovely place to be. Ooh, it looks like we're coming up on a boardwalk. Check out the boardwalk. Are we gonna boardwalk it? This is a native wetland garden and wick off overlook. I love a good boardwalk overlook. You can hear like water flowing and see all of the ancient trees. There's quite a canopy above us providing some shade. Just a small mossy waterfall there with some beautiful rock work. 
Oh, and there's some seating here too, a little gazebo to chill in. This is the John S. Wyckoff Overlook, dedicated in 1987. Is that the science center over there? It might, it might be. I think it might be. It looks like a residential area over there. Those houses have like little boat docks, some of them. You found a turtle? Yeah, the turtle. Where? Just about a couple inches under the water. Over just to the side there. I see him. Cute. Swimming around. He's amongst all the fishies. It's kind of like he's waiting for something to drop, right? I think all these fish are waiting for some treats. Yeah, they are. Food items. In this waterway, there are river otters, turtles. We're looking at beautiful bald cypress trees. Oh, water moccasins too. And of course, lush ferns. I love how the top of this hut has like plants growing on it. It's really pretty. The Harry P. Lou home dates back to the 1850s. It's a historic Florida home and museum, and it's right over there. And some of the oaks we're seeing are 200 years old. Yeah. Oh, just like a, a sign holder, but... Yeah, huh. where number 14 should be. 14, the so 14 Compsognathus. Should be right where the sign is, so... Yeah, it should be like right there. The dino has taken the sign and ran off into the, into the woods. It's always a danger when working with dinos yeah. that they're gonna do There's something like that. The Postosuchus, Postosuchus, crocodile from post. It's very, very small. The sign makes it look like it's going to be huge. I mean, that thing's probably seven feet long. It kind of does look like a crocodile, like when they stand up and their legs are stretched yeah. out, right? That is, that is I mean, very, a lot scarier of a mouth. Very but. noticeable creature here. <laughs> very this orange. Not, not very hidden. Yeah. So scientists don't know. Was it bipedal? Was it quadrupedal? Something pedal, but it's related to the modern day crocodile. And this is from the Triassic period. I love all the pretty bridges you walk over. See, there's another bridge up there and there's waterways connecting the entire park. These flowers are camellias. Look at the yellow ones, they look like suns. They're so bright and colorful. I think back here by the cottages, there's a butterfly garden. Butterfly puddling area. I see a lizard, but no butterflies. I saw some earlier just kind of flying around the park in general, but right now maybe they're just not here. We circled back around to the Harry P. Lou House to take a closer look at it. The Lou House Museum, a double-decker porch. Tours every half hour, last tour at 12.30, eight visitors at a time. You wanna do it? Mm -hmm. Yay! Couple minutes, four minutes till. Yeah! This is something I've been really excited to do ever since like I got the idea in my head that I wanted to come to Lou Gardens. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? Thank you. You can't read it, but it's 1888. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. Oh, wow. It's so beautiful right when you walk in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I love the smell of historic homes. Oh my gosh. Look, I can pretend I'm like a historic person. So, that's a pretty cool piano. It was donated from Austria, I believe. Oh, I want this lamp. First of all, if you can come here a little bit closer, this is a picture of what the very first house looked like. It was a small wooden house. Think of a little house on the prairie. Um, and it was about maybe 200 yards that way. I don't know if you guys have made it to, there's a small cemetery here. Oh, That's no. That's where many of the Mizells are buried. Angeline, she cooked and cleaned and farmed and raised six children. She had 250 acres. She grew cotton and tobacco right around here. Um, also, she dabbled in real estate. So she provided for her family. Lived First little, Orange County, Florida her, sheriff. Right, so he builds this house right here. The Woodward's used this as a winter retreat here from Alabama. Or it's uh, actually painted finally, on, I think. Um, they never had children, but they did want to leave a lasting legacy to the city that they loved. They were very civic-minded, and that's how come when it was close to the end of his life, he per made provisions to have his house and his property um, be with the city of Orlando. But he made some very strong restrictions, like it could never be subdivided into different houses or have commercial things on it. 
So remember Angeline, there were 250 acres by the time Cherokee Lou owned it, it was like 40 acres. Well, they like to play Parcheesi. We'll go now so into the dining room. There. So it's Ace Cafe now? Yeah, it used to be the It's like a remnant. Oh! I saw all the bands back in the 90s. Oh my god. So the first Warped Tour was there. 95 Warped Tour was in that building. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The Lou family's legacy lives on in this house and throughout the city of Orlando. And there's Mr. Lou right there. Harry P. Lou. This is a beautiful study. This room was created by the Pells, the second family. And we're gonna move on to the Butler's Pantry, which was created by the Woodwards, the third family, and the most wealthy of all the families who lived here. And because of the way the world is right now, they do not take guests upstairs, but they do have these photos of the upstairs rooms. And when they reopen that, I'm gonna come back because I love seeing historic bedrooms. Let's move on to the Butler's Pantry. Our tour guide mentioned that amongst these trinkets is a dish from the coronation of Queen Elizabeth that the Woodwards were invited to. That's amazing. This was for like their servants. It's like the servant staircase. Since the Woodwards were so rich, they had these servants' quarters. So when this was added on, it was with the Woodwards and their servants. This would have been called a warming kitchen. It's been told that Mr. Woodward would have the servants whistle when he brought them their food to the dining room. Can you yeah, imagine why it would have a servant's whistle? <laughs> anyway, it's been said that Mr. Woodward was very frugal, which means he liked to hold on to his money, and he didn't want the servants taking a bite of food before they got to the table, so he would have them whistle as he brought them oh, their food. They're so, stingy. Yeah, <laughs> frugal, however you want to look at it. But um, oh, the Lou's converted this into a, a full working kitchen. The piece of toast right oh, there. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything like this? Yeah, but it's yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Very classy. <laughs> what about the tiny chair? Well, you remember the Woodwards had children and grandchildren, so mm -hmm. that was most likely one of the grandchildren's chairs. Well, that's mm -hmm. precious. Most likely. Julie's. Julie's. Yeah. <laughs> Julie's chair, maybe, perhaps? Yeah. Love it. Do you want me to open this? Yeah. Room? Oh yes, we're hungry. Let's see, what's for lunch, guys? <laughs> oh, little cool. pieces of cake, a giant wedge of cheese. Yeah, that would make, that was something Steve Urbo would approve of. He's got any cheese. <laughs> thank you so oh, much. Oh my You're gosh, yes, awesome. thank you. This is so lovely. Time to go and get upstairs. Oh, I would love to go upstairs. I'll definitely be back. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Some rocking chairs. Some of my favorite historic homes to visit in South Florida include the Deering Estate and the Barnacle House, and this had a similar vibe. I love seeing the just the daily lives of Floridians in the early days from the 1800s into the early 1900s, and seeing the daily, like the appliances they use, the bedrooms, things like that. That was a great tour, and if you come out to Lou Gardens, I definitely recommend making time to do that tour. What was it, like 20 minutes or so? maybe half an hour. I'm sure it would have been longer if we could go upstairs, but very, very worth it, very cool. Oh look, they also have Jazz and Blues concert. I'm definitely gonna get on their email list to find out about upcoming events. Well, that was an absolutely lovely first visit to Lou Gardens. I'm so glad that I finally came out here and now I have more to look forward to on future visits. It's truly, truly a beautiful, sprawling gardens with history, and when they have this exhibit, the dinosaur exhibit, it's something I highly recommend. This will be going on through April, so check the website. It's only $10 admission. It's a really fun activity. I saw families having so much fun doing this, and it was fun for us as adults. Like, I feel like this is one of those fun for all ages type of a thing that I can definitely recommend, and it's a beautiful day out in nature. So I wanna thank you all so much for joining me. There's a lot of fun coming up as always, so please stay tuned, and if you're new and you enjoyed this, please subscribe for all the future fun. I am sending you all so much love, and once again, thanking you for joining me for all of our fun adventures. I'll see you for the next video, and until then, as always, stay enthused, bye.